Major support for Carolina Business Review provided by Grant Thornton. Operating in more than 100 countries, our tax, audit, and advisory professionals specialize in helping companies unlock their growth potential. Colonial Life, providing benefits to employees to help them protect their family, their finances, and their futures. High Point University, the premier life skills university, focused on preparing students for the world as it is going to be. And Sonoco, a global manufacturer of consumer and industrial packaging products and provider of packaging services with more than 300 operations in 35 countries. For the past couple of years at least, the relationship with South Carolina and the state-owned utility Santee Cooper has been incendiary, to say the least. In a moment, he is the chief executive officer of Santee Cooper. Mark Bonsell joins us, and we hope you will too. It starts now. Gratefully acknowledging support by Martin Marietta, a leading provider of natural resource-based building materials, providing the foundation upon which our communities improve and grow. Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. Visit us at SouthCarolinaBlues.com. The Duke Endowment, a private foundation enriching communities in the Carolinas through higher education, health care, rural churches, and children's services. Bearings, a leading global asset management firm dedicated to meeting the evolving investment and capital needs of its clients. Learn more at Bearings.com. On this edition of Carolina Business Review, an executive profile featuring Mark Bonzel, President and CEO of Santee Cooper. Thank you and welcome again to our program. We are honored to have, uh, at least for the first time on uh, broad media here in North and South Carolina, the Chief Executive Officer of the South Carolina-based Santee Cooper, Mark Bonsell. Mark, welcome to the program and welcome to the Carolinas, if it's not too late to say that. Thank you very much, Chris. I appreciate being here. Almost don't know where to start. Santee Cooper has been an incendiary topic in the media, but, and, and, and Mark, not being flippant about that, but this whole idea of a state-owned public utility and some of the, some of the issues around the over budget in the VC summer nuclear plant, and the closing down of that a couple of years, two or three years ago now. And then you uh, showed up on the scene about 18 months ago as CEO of Santee Cooper. What, what is job one for you? What do you hope to accomplish? Well, let me give you a little background on, on kind of how I got here. I, I, I was the CEO of an organization called Salt River Project in Phoenix, Arizona for about eight years. And I spent a 40 year career there. Um, and I retired and uh, my wife and I spent all the time doing bucket list things. Uh, and then I got a little itchy and I was aware of this situation. I had worked with Sandy Cooper, Chris, for over 30 years since the uh, early 80s and uh, uh, knew of the institution. There was a kinship between Salt River Project and Sandy Cooper because both institutions had both power and water. and and large public power institutions. They were the only two that shared that commonality. And I, I had worked with the people of Santa Cooper before, uh, knew a little bit about the, the situation and was uh, uh, empathetic and had done some homework on it. And, and I also knew it, it, it was a solvable problem. And my commitment thus was to not throw the baby out with the, with the bathwater. It's a, it's a good institution. And because it was a solvable problem and I could help when the call came and I didn't call them, they called me, mm -hmm. expressed an interest and lo and behold, you know, here I, uh, here I am. The, uh, and job one, I would say is, was to, was to achieve stability. Um, uh, and I think we've made a huge amount of progress in doing that. The first 60 days I brought an individual with me from Salt River Project, whom you may have read about, an individual named Charlie Duckworth. He was mm -hmm. my resource planning manager and strategic planning manager and, and an expert in resource economics. And, and I viewed the issue as being fundamentally a resource economics issue. The rest of Sandy Cooper, the reliability portion of Sandy Cooper, the customer service part of Sandy Cooper, the, the um, um, safety part of Sandy Cooper, 
and basically the existing price structure of Sandy Cooper. They were fine. The bones were not broken. The, the issue was uh, a resource planning that frankly got off the tracks and it needed to be put back on the, back on the tracks, mitigate the, the damage that had been done to the extent that it could be. And, uh, and it could be substantially and then get the, get the train kind of back on the tracks because the institution itself uh, is a very beneficial uh, institution. It provides both and power infrastructure to much of the state of South Carolina that laps over obviously into uh, North Carolina uh, as well. So I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to help and I perceived it as a problem that could in fact be fixed. Can I tell you a little bit about how? Please. The, the, the opportunities that existed in the utility business, the electric utility business in this decade are unprecedented in my experience. And I've got over 40 years of experience doing this. Um, the economics of natural gas, the economics of renewables have, have undertaken such a seismic shift that in fact, the ability to reduce your marginal long-term costs exists today and it never had in the 30 years prior to that point in this industry. So you can in fact affect uh, both a leaner and a greener marginal cost of electricity. That opportunity existed. It was not being uh, taken advantage of uh, at, at Sandy Cooper, but it could be. And so that's the, that was the opportunity to come in and affect those kinds of changes, maintaining the health of the bones, the skeleton, mm -hmm. and improving the long-term uh, economics of the, uh, of the operation. Anybody that came in, whether you sold this institution, whether somebody else came in to manage it, or whether Sandy Cooper managed it himself, would do those same things. And the, the benefit I thought that I could bring to it was some way, shape, or form. I know how to do those things. That's the piece that they were missing. Good organization otherwise put the two together and, and create a new future uh, for the institution. Well, what's the... You know, the, the acrimonious part, the, 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 in the court of public opinion, it, it depends who you talk to, but of course, Santee Cooper has its supporters in the low country and, and the service area. And then it has those folks in the state, and this is not going to be a surprise to you, and especially in the General Assembly that absolutely want to sell the asset and don't like, don't like the attitude from, from senior management at Santee Cooper. How, did that surprise you? Does that surprise you? And is there a way to remediate that at, at this hour of the game? Well, I think the answer to that is, is you have to be committed to rebuilding trust. So let's, let's go back a little bit on the history of the, of the issue. And by the way, I'm not an expert on the history of the issue because I wasn't here. Mm -hmm. They asked me to look forward, uh, not necessarily look backward, but, but you really kind of have to do the same at the same time. Uh, and, and, the history of developing nuclear generating stations in this industry is not good. If, if you look back on it, the allure of nuclear power is very compelling and an enormous amount of non-emitting uh, uh, energy. The problem is getting them built and the, and the industry is checkered with difficulties in, in getting these kinds of plants built. And all you gotta do is look across the, the, the border uh, at Vogel, and it's gone through quite a difficult history. It, it, it would appear that it's going to make it, uh, but it's going to be real expensive uh, once they get it built. So that was the, that, that's the, the allure was there, and I understand that. I can understand a lot of people in South Carolina and, and the Carolinas finding that to be attractive. The challenge is getting them, getting them built. Uh, and, and this one kind of got off the off the tracks. Now, Sandy Cooper, as you know, was was kind of the junior partner. It was not the senior partner uh, in the in the project. Uh, and, and but it made the right decision when it could, which was to say, stop. This mm -hmm. is going rails. The economics are going south on us. This is not going to be realizable. We need to shut it down. This is the those are very 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 difficult decisions uh, to make. But I but I credit the board in making the right decision. I don't, I, I don't want to beat this up. I promise we're not going to talk about this for the, for the whole extent that we're together, Mark. The idea that a salvageable relationship is with the General Assembly, are you optimistic? 
Uh, well, I'm, I'm, am I optimistic? I, I'm hopeful. The, the issue is, um, was trust and their knowledge of uh, what was going on here. And that was broken. And I understand that. And I understand why they would be full of angst about that. I, I get that. The, uh, and we need to put those pieces back together again. And part of, put a, part of putting the pieces back together again is restoring the health of the institution, which we can talk about. And I think we have, have in fact done. But then uh, installing systematic processes for transparency and disclosure. And, and we should do that. I, that's fine with me. I think that's, in fact, the right thing to do. It. That's the piece that seems to me to have been uh, in. Uh, so as you look to what needs to be kind of repaired or addressed here to some degree, to some large degree, I think the issue was not so much the failure of the, mm -hmm. the project, it was the failure to talk about it. Can and, you uh, I understand. go ahead, I'm sorry. Apologies. Yeah. I understand that. We've made suggestions about, uh, you and I both have a financial background and in the old days of, of municipal finance, uh, I'm, I'm thinking 90s and earlier, mm -hmm. all of us in this business used to produce systematically uh, a consulting engineer's report. And we included it in our official statement so that our investors could rely on somebody else coming in, kicking the tires, making sure that everything worked well, the plans were in sync, it made sense, et cetera. And we included that as part of our official statement. That practice died sometime in the 1990s. But that to me is an example of the kind of thing that can be done systematically uh, to provide people with you know, external party validation that the operation of the of the institution is 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 good, is rational, is accomplishing its purpose. Do you you get the feel during the general assembly session that, that is now in progress um, that there will be one thing or two things or several bullet points that come out of the reform so far that you've been able you and your team have been able to achieve that will tip the scales for the best long-term viability of Santee Cooper as an agency of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Do I believe that that will emerge from the uh, general yes. assembly? I, I do, I, like I say, I'm hopeful, but I think that's the because I think that's the rational solution. The, the entirety of the institution is, is, if you look at it, is very good. I mean, it produces good results. It's a, it's a publicly owned institution. It delivers the benefits that it's supposed to deliver, reliability, water, broadband now, et cetera. Um, so all those things are, are, are good. The issue is one of, I think, principally communication. And I do believe that, that there are responses to that, that question that, are, that should be fully satisfactory and, and should be in fact implemented. Mm -hmm. I, kind of environment that I had uh, at Salt River Project. Full disclosure on the website, come on in, take a look. We're a public institution and we're draped in the public interest. And as a result, have a responsibility to inform that public interest about what we're doing. I, I believe that. Uh, you've had at least two seismic challenges <laughs> since you took over. One is the closing and the shuttering of the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. And the second one is a new administration in, in Washington. Um, mm -hmm. Any which of one will have an, a pretty big impact on the DNA of your, of your business. Um, how does the Atlantic Coast Pipeline, how does that shutting down affect where you are now? And what about a new Biden administration's policy? I'll address the, the Atlantic Coast Pipeline question in terms of planning. One of the things we did early on at Sandy Cooper in creating the reform plan was to ask the board to adopt formal resource planning and formal financial planning principles. And we built our plan around those principles. Um, and one of the principles in the resource planning side, as I think you can particularly value, is optionality, optionality, optionality. So measure your risks and have backup plans. So we did have backup plans for the potential event that the Atlantic Coast Pipeline could in fact be canceled. Uh, and there's, there's two of them. In fact, one of the backup plans is probably preferable to the principal uh, plan, which is to restore the potential for additional generation 
um, in the west part uh, of the state, in fact, at the UC Summer site. And the, the reason for that is you've got existing transmission, you've got land, you've got water, you've got an existing operation, you've got existing common facilities. None of that has to be replicated. It's an existing site that can be used fruitfully for the entire region, actually, because there's a lot of transmission that kind of intersects at that particular point. So that's the backup plan. That's one of the backup plans. We have another backup plan in place as well. So optionality, I think, is the answer to your to your question. Is, is that was that a big hit? Yeah, it but it was not unexpected. And and as a result of not being unexpected, mm-hmm. they had backup plans in place that we could go pursue. As to the Biden administration uh, question, um, I think the Biden administration, there will be pluses and minuses uh, as there are in any administrative change. One of the things that has been talked about even within the last few days, the the first few days of the administration is to lift the prohibition uh, against public power entities on advance refundings of their debt. That's the tool that everybody in the world has refinance our mortgages periodically. There's actually limitations on the ability of an institution like Sandy Cooper to do that. So you're managing your debt with one hand tied behind your back. Uh, and they're talking about lifting that restriction. That's a very sophisticated concept for a new administration to talk about, but it's actually tremendously meaningful to institutions like Sandy Cooper and my former employee, Salt River Project. The implications potentially to what goes on with natural gas prices, fracking, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Clearly, there there could be some implications there, and they drive the fuel economics of an institution like this. And we're just going to have to see how they play out. But you can probably expect that it's not going to be as cheap as it has been over the last decade, clearly. And just plan for that. Yeah, plan for that. So, as the metric changes, the matrix changes rather around power generation, solar, and now we also have EVs, and we've got, you know, Tesla has certainly uh, helped the whole generation to discover that electric cars are certainly a a wave of the future. How does all of this change the way that Santa Cooper could potentially uh, continue to generate power beyond just solar? Well, batteries certainly are are a, a tremendous opportunity, and everybody has and touting the potential value of batteries for a long, long period of time. But in, in recent years and forecast in the next few years, uh, battery technology, I think, really will make substantial uh, advances. And the advances are the density of energy that can be contained within a battery. So same size battery, but five times as much energy. A huge change. That's a, that's, a, that's a sea change in the ability to deploy batteries uh, effectively. And, Things like batteries, thus, they're all the changes you talk about are actually all favorable. So the storage mechanisms can smooth out your load, smooth out your production, and because now you have a storage mechanism that can that can intervene, so your production can in fact be more efficient because you're producing seven by twenty-four. The, the load you serve may may go up and down, but you can produce. Uh, pretty much in, a, in the shape of a rectangle and just feed the excess into the batteries and then and then take it out uh, of the battery. So that's that's a dramatic uh, improvement actually in the economics of the industry because it improves the economics of generation. Same thing with the electric vehicles. Uh, because if, for instance, in, in Arizona in particular uh, or anywhere, frankly, uh, um, that f- m- more than likely uh, the load goes down generally at night. And if people are charging at night, or you can influence people to charge whenever your load otherwise goes down, same same effect. You flatten your load, you thus flatten, you make more efficient your ability uh, to produce uh, produce energy. Those are both favorable changes to the industry. The, do, do producers like Santee Cooper and the Salt River Project is, is where you were before, and as you've referenced a couple times now, do, do you have the leverage, do you have the economies of scale that a Duke Energy or NextEra or Dominion would have, does it allow you to be competitive long-term or would you eventually have to look for some capital structure reset or some type of strategic partnership to remain competitive the long, long-term? No, I think the, uh, uh, that's a very complex question, Chris. And the, the, um, 
but I think Sandy Cooper is just about of the size where where uh, where you need to be to be functional in this uh, um, and configured uh, in a way with both generation transmission and distribution uh, to be a player there. Do I think there are opportunities uh, that necessitate uh, growth in the institutional size of the business to to maintain um, um, economies of scale? As long as you're about the size of Santa Cooper, I think you're okay. Smaller entities probably would suffer. But most of what you're talking about can be accomplished through contractual relationships, not necessarily physical or ownership relationships. And, and let me give you an example. You've probably heard of Project Seam. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And Seam uh, is a regional. A construct where the, the last little bit of energy that exists on the system can in fact be traded uh, on a marginal cost basis with no transmission costs. So, so it allows you to optimize uh, that last five minutes. It's a 15 minute market basically for, uh, for energy. You, you don't have to be huge to avail yourself of that. You have to have transmission interconnections, but you don't have to be huge to avail yourself of that. That kind of market requires size, scope, but that can be created contractually among the parties. It doesn't have to be a physical reality, one owner system. Uh -huh. Is that, am I responding to your yeah, question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm also thinking about, Mark, the, 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 the larger, it, we go back to the Biden administration's policies that, that are unknown right now, uh, in, <clears> in large part, but the idea that many people have said there needs to be reform among the electric grid in the US anyway, could there be, um, could there be something, I don't want to just speculate too much because hypothetically it's not going to mean anything, but a major change or upgrade in the, in, in the, the grid itself, does that, could that be a prohibitive cost for someone like Santa Cooper if it came down the pipe? It could be a large cost, whether it would be a prohibitive cost or not is, is a relative question relative to others, but it could, could be a large cost. Yes, it could be because the grid obviously was not built to, to uh, be omnidirectional. It was built to get power from point A to point B because there was a load there and there was a generator here. And if you want to restructure the grid to basically be omnidirectional, is that a huge investment? Yeah, it is a huge investment. It's not built that way right now. So it would be difficult to do that. It's a long term to, to answer your question. It, if you want to do that, it can be done, but you should you should give it a long lead time because it's not a simple process uh, and it's not it's not going to happen overnight. Could it could it happen? Yeah, it could, but it's probably a 10, 15, maybe 20 year kind of a transit. Yeah, that, it, that's, that's what I thought. We have about three minutes left and I want to unpack the idea is, is you through parallels to the Salt, Region, Salt River project, which came from in Arizona, as well as Santee Cooper, one of the service capabilities you have is also water, but another one is broadband. And there's a lot of talk about mm -hmm. broadband access in that last mile to everyone's home, as well as everyone's business. Mark, do you, would you forecast that the South Carolina General Assembly will fully fund whatever that broadband accessibility and connectivity will be and needs to be? Will they do it this year? I can't answer that question. I apologize. I really can't answer that question. I think that is clearly their intent. Uh, I, I don't know if anybody knows exactly how much that's going to cost, but I do know that Sandy Cooper has an existing grid. Uh, it delivers energy to every single county in the state of South Carolina. Uh, it doesn't. It, it doesn't have poles in every county, but it it it, it reaches into every county. So you don't. You you do not need to reinvent the wheel there. You don't need to make a new investment in a new grid. You can hop on ours. And we have no intention of being the last mile uh, provider, as you know, but mm -hmm. but but we do want to be a, a meaningful player in creating the broadband backbone for the state of South Carolina. And I think we can go a long ways to, to doing that. I hope they do. It's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's as important as when Sandy Cooper was created 85 years ago to bring light to rural South Carolina, it's this. It's the same kind of public purpose of bringing communication, telemed, teleeducation, et cetera, to all of Sandy, all of South Carolina, and we look forward to playing a role in that. 
In, in a minute left, um, we're gonna we're gonna end up where we started, Mark. And, and as much as you feel comfortable answering this question, how would you handicap this year in the in the in the general session, this general assembly of session, that the fate of Santee Cooper will be sealed by a vote in the general assembly? Well, between you and me, I hope that it does. This is the third year uh, that it's under consideration, and uh, there's been a lot of deep thought given to it, and a lot of a lot of effort, et cetera, et cetera. And and uh, I am hopeful that uh, that we get an answer, frankly. And it's up to the general assembly. It's clearly up to the general assembly. Uh, but I I feel comfortable, pleased. I, I've made a couple of mistakes, but I feel comfortable and pleased that we've made the progress in delivering a better institution to the state of South for their consideration. Whatever they decide, it's a better institution. It's got more value associated with it. It's got fewer problems. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with that. Uh, Chief Executive Bonsell, thank you uh, for taking time on the uh, half an hour. is no small commitment out of your schedule. And thank you for your leadership in South Carolina. Best of luck and uh, please stay healthy. Thank you much. I appreciate that. You take care. Major funding for Carolina Business Review provided by High Point University, Martin Marietta, Colonial Life, The Duke Endowment, Bearings, Grant Thornton, Sonoco, Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina, and by viewers like you. Thank you.